Hi guys, today we're going to learn about textiles. So we're going to look at different types of fibres and fabrics, understand their properties, structure and uses. We've got lots to do, so let's get into it. So when we're talking about textiles, we might mean cloth or fabric or yarn. We're going to go through those today. So they're uh, more than just clothing and homeware, obviously, most people associate. They're fundamental in things even like uh, military purposes, uh, protective uh, personal equipment things like upholstery as well as even medicinal uses so don't underestimate what they can be used for so there are two main categories so of uh, natural and synthetic but most fabrics are actually a blend of both so natural fibers come from plant and animal products whereas synthetic fibers come from petroleum based chemicals or coals and 94 percent of all fabrics nowadays are made from oil, of course, that it's so cheap and abundant and easy to do. Whereas in the past, of course, they would all be natural. So let's go through some natural fibres. We've got five to learn. The first is wool. Obviously, it comes tends to come from sheep, but you can get it from alpacas, um, even from rabbits, all sorts of places. It's for use for things like jumpers, uh, for coats, very expensive, lovely wool suits, hats, carpets. Uh, and tweed felt and jersey. It's really warm and crease resistant and it has low flammability which is good and of course because it comes uh, from an animal it is sustainable. However it does shrink with heat uh, after you've washed it if you heat it up too much. Um, it can be really quite itchy and it is expensive. Silk comes from the silkworm or specifically from the cocoons that they make um, before they turn into their moth stage. <clears throat> it is used for things like scarves, nightwear, dresses and ties. Properties are of course that it's silky smooth, that's where we get the term from. It's very very smooth indeed. It has good drape, that means the way that it hangs off your body. It's very comfortable because it's so soft. It's sun resistant and sustainable. However it does crease really quite easily, it is very expensive uh, it doesn't wash especially well and there are ethical concerns because depending on how the silk is sourced they may or may not kill the insects in the process so if you're a vegan you may choose to not wear silk and then next we have leather which comes tends to come from cows obviously the animals aren't killed for their leather they're killed for their meat and leather is a byproduct but you can make leather from any kind of animal it tends to be used for things like belts sofas car seats bags and jackets. Uh, you can cut quite thick leather like belt leather or quite thin flexible soft leather like on a jacket. The benefits is that it doesn't fray, holds its shape very well, uh, it's very long lasting. Um, I've had my leather jacket since I was a teenager and it looks as good as the day I bought it. It's very sustainable. Um, downsides is that it is quite difficult to sew, you have to have specialist equipment. It is expensive and there are ethical concerns, of course, in terms of um, uh, butchering the animal as well. Next we have our two plant-based ones. So cotton comes from the cotton plant, these fluffy little bits at the top. It tends to be used for things like t-shirts, uh, bedding, bath towels and jeans, if you didn't know that already. It is very comfortable, it dyes very well and it washes well and it's sustainable. However, it does crease somewhat, it's somewhat flammable. It doesn't have great elasticity and it dries quite slowly. Next, we have linen. That comes from the flax plant. Lovely little blue um, little flowers there. And you may have actually had the flax seed before, also known as linseed, uh, perhaps on your cereal. So it's used in things like bed linen, furniture, dresses, tunics, jackets and trousers. The benefits of it is that it's really cool in hot weather. So in hot countries, in places uh, like Qatar, uh, they tend to wear these sort of long tunics uh, made from linen because they're so cool to wear. They dye very well and they're sustainable. However, it does crease very badly indeed. It is somewhat flammable. Um, it has poor elasticity and dry slowly too. So next we have our synthetic fibres. So the two main ones we need to know are polyester. That comes from coal and oil, of course, as I mentioned before. It's used for, for cheap things like clothing, curtains, 
cushion filling and tablecloths. It's uh, pretty strong. It has good elasticity. It dries quickly. It doesn't crease. And as I mentioned, it's cheap. Of course, that's why it's so abundant. However, uh, it's not biodegradable because, of course, it comes from um, uh, petroleum sources and therefore not sustainable. And it's also really very flammable in that it melts. There was a story a couple of years ago of a little girl who unfortunately got her uh, witch's costume at Halloween caught on a candle and she got very, very badly burned. There's since been uh, quite a movement to try and take polyester out of children's clothing for this reason. Next, we have elastane, also known as lycra. So also from petroleum sources, it's for use for things like sportswear. And it's combined with other fibres for uh, stretchy jeans. So it's extremely elastic, of course. It dries quickly and doesn't crease and it's cheap. However, it also has the same issues as polyester. We also need to be familiar with uh, other examples like acrylic and nylon. In their sheet form, of course, they're sort of quite brittle, pliable materials. Um, but as uh, fibres, they actually become very soft. Um, and uh, one of my favourite jumpers, in fact, the one I'm wearing right now, is 60% acrylic and 40% nylon. And it's so soft, it's my favourite jumper. Since we're talking about nylon, I would like you to go and watch this short, amazing video on how it's made. I actually managed to make this myself when I did my chemistry A level. So if you do the same, you might also get to make your own. It's really interesting. Go and give it a watch. As I mentioned, most textiles and fabrics want the best properties of both. We can think of these as a type of composite. So if you want to improve the drape, the way it hangs, comfort against your skin, breathability, the ability to wash or sew, or to reduce the cost, you might combine two types of uh, fiber. So how you do this is either uh, by blending them. So you take two or more fibers spun together. So polycotton is our example to know about. Okay, so polycotton is a blended fabric. Then we have mixed fabrics where you weave two or more yarns together. So for instance, skinny cotton jeans are two to five percent elastane. So in one direction, you will have the cotton fibers uh, or yarns so rather, sorry. And in the other direction, you will have some elastane. The last ones we need to know about are our technical textiles. These are really cool. So the first is Kevlar. It is five times stronger than steel. Uh, the chemical bonds and weave patterns uh, increase its strength and it's very resistant to abrasion. It's used for things like bulletproof vests, motorcycle jackets in case they could fall off if they have an accident. And if you can believe it, for reinforcing tyres for strength. Amazing. And then we have conductive fabrics. They're fairly self-explanatory. They conduct electricity. So metal strands are actually woven through the textile or there's a metal coating on the top. And why do we want it? Well, for wearable tech and for touchscreen gloves. You may even have a pair at home. Amazing. So now we've talked about the types of fabrics. Let's talk about how we get there. So when we start, we have microscopic thread like strands called fibres. They come in short lengths called staple fibres or long lengths called filaments. These fibres are spun or twisted together and to produce a long, strong yarn. These yarns are then twisted together to form a ply. Depending on how many yarns you have, if you have two yarns together, it's two ply. If it's three yarns, it's three ply. These yarns are then combined to create a length of flexible uh, material called fabric, which is then sewn into garments and other products. So what I would like to do is to watch this video on how they make yarn from recycled polyester bottles. Amazing. So there are three main methods for constructing fabric. That is a, a woven fabric, a non-woven fabric, and a knitted fabric. So the most common method is the woven fabric. So two sets of yarns are interlaced at right angles to each other. You have the weft threads and the warp threads. If you want a way of remembering it, you uh, it goes direction of weft from right to left. Uh, when warp's in town, it goes up and down. There you go, just a little way of remembering. So when you combine different colours and arrangements, you create different patterns within the weave. So it's used for lots of things, of course, uh, like tablecloths, upholstery, and clothing and bedding, you name it. 
So I have this brilliant video for you on how denim is made from the fibre to the garment. So I'd like you to pause this video and go and watch that one and come back when you're done. See you in a minute. Next, we have non-woven fabrics. So this is the simplest method, um, but they're not very strong. So originally they would be crafted from wool by hand um, by a process called carding. And now they are often, of course, large scale with cheap acrylic fibres. How it works is that they are meshed together and they can be moulded using moisture, heat and pressure. You combine these threes and you get a felt. Uh, it doesn't fray, but it doesn't have any elasticity or drape. So it tends, as these kind of felts tend to be used for things like hats, slippers, throws, insulation materials in your roof, crafts and toys, and of course, snooker table covers. And last, we have knitted fabrics. Now, it's not just all about your nan knitting away. She's watching the telly. There's been a real revolution nowadays in sort of huge knitted um, throws. But we're not just talking about really obvious knits like this jumper here. We're also talking about really fine knits, ones that at a distance you wouldn't even think were knitted. OK, but they are. So keep this in mind as well. So you can see the comparison here between a woven fabric that doesn't have very much give, okay, depending on the direction that you pull it, whereas a knitted fabric is stretchy in every direction. So that's the real benefit of knitted fabrics. So they are created by either a weft or warp knit uh, with interlocking loops. They look like that. They drape really well. Of course, they're very insulative. Every time you are creating a little loop, you're trapping the air inside it. So it's going to keep that warm air by your body. And they're very stretchy. However, they can lose their shape over time or between washes. And if you catch a thread, the whole thing will unravel. So, of course, it's used for things like jumpers and cardigans, but also neck curtains, terry toweling, tights, lace, throws and your favourite Christmas jumper. So we've got some examples. I have a tent for you, this gentleman's very fancy scarf, this cushion cover, this lady's leggings, this boy's uh, school jumper, and these motorcycle gloves. I'd like you to stop the video, think about what each one will be made from, and we'll go through the answers in a second. Okay, so hope you've given that some thought. Let's go through. So the tent is made of polyester or nylon. In the olden days, they would be made of wax cotton, if, in case you're interested. This gentleman's scarf is, of course, silk, if you have the money. Or if it's a cheap alternative, it would be made of polyester. This cushion cover is probably cotton or a poly cotton mix. These leggings, hopefully you got this one. They are either going to be cotton with elastane or polyester with elastane. But but. Uh, really focusing on that lycra, that elastane element. This boy's jumper, you may have said wool, but you would be wrong. It's almost certainly acrylic uh, because it's cheap. And then these gloves, they are made of leather and Kevlar, very abrasion resistant, amazing. So to recap, textiles are derived from either natural plant and animal products. We've learned about wool, uh, wool silk, leather, cotton and linen, or synthetic products like polyester and elastane. Most are mixed or blended composites, uh, such as polycotton, and technical textiles like Kevlar and conductive fabrics are really good examples. They begin by with either short staple or long filament fibres, which are spun together into ply yarns, and they can be turned into fabrics. And the three main types of are of processing are woven, non-woven and knitted. So I hope you learned a lot today and I'll see you next time. Bye.